Hey everybody, welcome back to another Steelers training camp update here from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Brian Batko, joined by Ray Fittipaldo. As always, this update brought to you by Savinas, Kane, and Gallucci, mesothelioma and asbestos lawyers. Over 85 years of experience. You can call them now if you need a free consultation. Another hot, sweaty, sweltering day out here at St. Vincent College. It's just miserable. It's sticky. I don't care what the temperature says, Ray. It feels like it's 120 degrees here. Mike Tomlin said it's the dog days. I guess we're pretty much past the halfway point. I don't know if the Steelers players feel that way, but I certainly feel that way. I can see the end coming, and that's a good thing. Brad. Yeah, yeah, it, it feels miserable up here, and that's even with the 10:30 practice instead of the 1:55 start times that they've been used to. They're not losing any of that misery. We can tell you that firsthand. There was an update today, though, on the practice field after an off day. Quarterback Russell Wilson doing more than he had previously. We saw him for the first time in that seven shots drill from the goal line just about that kicks off most days of practice up here, Ray. Yeah. A few handoffs, which has been standard for Russ when he's in live 11-on-11 11 11 team periods. He did throw one pass. I think it was basically a one-step drop. He wasn't going to get in any danger in yeah. the pocket back there. Threw it up to George Pickens, who, of course, came down with it yeah. for a touchdown, as he always seems to do in the end zone. But, again, seems to be moving in the right direction, trending upward from that calf issue. Yeah, I think the big takeaway today was his work in seven shots. Took four of the seven reps, as you mentioned, three handoffs in one uh, pass attempt. Uh, His first touchdown as a Steelers, I heard somebody yell out from the sideline. Yeah, from from the sideline. Um, but also, I mean, you look at his work in the other um, team periods. He was pr pretty much splitting the reps with Justin Fields. We really hadn't seen that to this point. It was mostly Fields working with the starters and then Russ coming in with the second or third team. So it does seem like he's inching closer. I still don't think we're going to get to see him play on Friday Yeah, and night. I wouldn't even call today a full day. I mean, no. I'd say still limited. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. mixing up with the you know different units there on the offense for him. I think the goal is probably for him to be full next week, give him three or four practices leading up to that second preseason game against the Bills and let him take the reps with the ones there. Absolutely. There was more to the day, though, than just Russell Wilson. We heard from new wide receivers coach Zach Azani, who talked a lot about how He's coaching him hard. He's making life uncomfortable at times. He said you can ask anybody in his life, even his kids. He does that. He gets on you no, no matter what you're trying to do. And he said that's what Mike Tomlin hired him to do. To me, Ray, it's pretty obvious that his job here, you better take to help George Pickens go to that next level. And he basically shrugged off the first day of practice, uh, you know, minor exchange, altercation, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it with Pickens. He said it's not a big deal. Uh, George knows, you know, what I'm here to do. And uh, I'm, I'm getting on all these guys. It's not yeah. just him. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not a big deal to him, but I can tell you from watching these training camp practices pretty much for the last decade, that was really the first time on the field that we saw a receivers coach get after a player the way he got after George Pickens. Yeah, the position coaches are usually the buddy-buddy ones, right? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're kind of the ones that are the go-between between the offensive coordinator or the head coach who's more of the bad cop oftentimes. So now you got maybe a bad cop at the position <laughs> coach at receiver. I don't know who the good cop is now, but yeah, you know, previous receivers coaches, uh, Brian, they've had a ton of them, you know, in the last decade or so. Uh, Richard Mann, Ike Hilliard, Frisman Jackson, the late Daryl Drake, you know, I, I just named four off the top of my head. Um, all those guys have different styles. I will say Zach Azani seems to have a style of his own. He is in your face. Um, he is going to hold you accountable. And Based on what we know about these Steelers receivers the last couple of years, I, I think that's a welcome thing. Yeah, he made it sound like there was really a lot of drop-off for that position group when he wasn't here last year, and I think a lot of people watching at home would probably agree with that. The intangibles, uh, the edge, uh, the grit from that unit, not really where people wanted it to be, especially the Steelers and Coach Mike Tomlin, who clearly made a change there. Uh, good day, I think, again, for the young offensive lineman, Ray. Uh, I will mention Mason McCormick. Uh, I think he's just making his presence felt a little more. There was an inside run play where he and Elandon Roberts kind of ended up helmet to helmet and no scrap this time. So maybe number 50 said, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to pick that battle again after last week. But Zach Frazier also had maybe his best play that we've seen yeah. from him uh, up here as a Steeler so far. Laid all his former teammate, Beanie Bishop, uh, on a little... Um, I guess it was a pull. I don't know how you... Country roads take me to the ground, uh, yeah. whatever it was. Yeah, but uh, you know, I'm sure Beanie knows, knows that's a part of it now, ex-teammates, but now they're they're competing against each other every single day. I thought the big takeaway, you, you know, you mentioned McCormick. He had been repping as the top backup to James Daniels at right guard. 
Isaac Sayamalo had the day off today. Another maintenance day. We should have an yeah. Isaac Sayamalo off day counter at the top of the screen. We'd be uh, we're, we're nearing double digits. He, I think he gets at this more point, of them but, than anyone, maybe except yeah. for Cam Hayward. Yeah, he, he and Cam might be pretty close. But for the first time today, we saw Mason McCormick and Spencer Anderson splitting those reps at left guard. So Mason McCormick getting a little, you know a little bit more run with with the starters here. I think the big headline for for the offensive line today, Troy Fautanu, the rookie first round pick, went with the first team unit throughout practice. Dan Moore is still at left tackle, but Dan Moore was now splitting reps with Broderick Jones at left tackle. So we all know what the deal is eventually. Broderick Jones is going to be the left tackle, Troy Fautanu the right tackle. We just don't have a firm tie timetable as to when that's exactly going to occur. And we all know Broderick Jones is going to be in the starting lineup come week one at Atlanta. The other two guys are sort of like planets moving around his orbit, or I guess Broderick's sort of the one flipping, depending on who wins the job between those two. But yeah, really good block by Zach Frazier on Beanie Bishop, who, I mean, he did what he was supposed to do. He came in from that nickel position. We know that Mike Tomlin's been on him to be hitting when the pads come on. Don't just be that outside corner that you were in the Big 12 now that you're playing in the slot for us, you better be ready to come down like Mike Hilton used to do once upon a time, put a body on a running back and, and make your presence felt. He tried. He did his part. <laughs> but Zach Frazier said, get up on out of here and just uh, and, and wipe the, the grass with him. So um, we, we had that today as well, which was good to see from those guys. Another padded practice after an off day yesterday. And uh, you mean, other than that, Ray, it's, it's going to be two more days. It's probably going to be more of a game week type feel tomorrow and yeah. Thursday. Thursday might even be somewhat of a walkthrough. Mike Tomlin going to address the media early Wednesday. We'll see if he lays out his plans at all as far as who is and isn't playing. Uh, guys like Patrick Queen sat out again today. Like you said, Cam Hayward, uh, they're basically keeping him safe. Uh, Tomlin said DeMarvin Leal is dealing with something at the moment. So you don't get a full official detailed injury report this time of year. Hopefully Tomlin sheds some light on his, uh, on his plans for personnel and of course the quarterback position. And we should also mention Alex Highsmith is dealing with a groin injury. He suffered that apparently today. A few other minor injuries, um, but yeah, it doesn't look like Alex Highsmith will play on Friday night either. Bumps and bruises associated with play this time of year, as Mike Tomlin would say. Thanks again for joining us here on a training camp update from the Post Gazette. We'll have another North Shore Drive podcast for you Wednesday morning with, I believe myself and Chris Carter, and then we'll be taking you uh, all through the week to prepare for the first Steelers preseason game Friday night, 7 p.m. against the Texans at Acrisure Stadium. For Ray Fittipato, I'm Brian Batko. Thanks for finding us here on the Post-Gazette channel on YouTube. Thank you for checking out this content from Post-Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For all of the sports coverage the Post-Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com.